Good morning. Uh, thanks uh, very much for being here. Um, my name is Andrew Lloyd. Um, and in the course of the next 40 minutes, hopefully we can have a bit of a conversation and I will certainly introduce you to Carrero Network Security. Um, yesterday, I was uh, quizzed by ITN uh, on the topic of Carphone Warehouse Dixons, or whichever way around they are. Um, in that yesterday they had to disclose to the market that they had again uh, suffered a fairly serious data breach. And they have form. Uh, they have form in that in 2015 they suffered a distributed denial of service attack that allegedly was a smokescreen attack for uh, data theft. That resulted in February this year with them uh, being fined by the information um, commissioner uh, I think the fine was £400,000. You cannot fail to have noticed that uh, in May, uh, GDPR regulations came in, and along with 4% of global revenues being the big threat, uh, the real size of the stick is probably £17 million. Either way, their stock price went down 10% yesterday on the back of that news. Uh, only this morning, I was asked by our PR firm to comment on the start of the World Cup. You know, what is the World Cup to do with distributed denial of service? Well, it happens that the new normal in global sporting events is that nation states decide they're going to take it out on their political foes and go and DDoS them. So the verb is DDoS, the noun is DDoS. Um, we uh, protect DDoS faster and better than anybody else. Uh, obviously, the World Cup is in Russia. The opening game is Russia versus Saudi Arabia. If I told you that one of the biggest uh, nations that is cited with uh, mounting these attacks by the spooks is Iran, then uh, you'd be no surprise this afternoon if we discovered that there is a cyber attack being launched on the FIFA infrastructure, on the live video streams, or perhaps even more lucrative, the in-game betting associated with uh, betting on uh, the result of a football match. This may seem uh, completely fanciful, but this is the life we live in, and these are the types of cyber attacks that are not a once every few months thing, they're happening every day to businesses large and small, uh, to government agencies. Uh, all of this is criminal activity and Carrero is singularly focused on uh, detecting and mitigating these nasty DDoS attacks in real time. Real time means uh, less than a second, or very typically less than a second. Uh, DDoS is nothing new. It's been out there for over 20 years. DDoS, like most uh, nasty things out there, mutates. Uh, the criminals get smarter, they get better funded. Um, what's happened during the course of this year is that governments and government agencies have been bold enough to come out and say, it's the other guys, it's nascent state that is causing quite a lot of the issue. Um, and whilst there's plenty of evidence to suggest that's true, um, particularly in the headline grabbing attacks, uh, the reality is that most of the attacks go uh, more under the radar. We'll discuss that in some more detail later. Uh, but whether the attacks are the uh, blowing the bloody doors off uh, style of attacks that will actually make the newspapers, or whether they're the stealth attacks, large and small, uh, we block them faster and better than anybody else. Traditional mitigation takes uh, typically 10 to 20 minutes. There is no business today that has a revenue online or a reputation that is forged online that can afford to be offline for 10 or 20 minutes. Customers don't like it. Uh, the press is waiting for it. Uh, so the market is coming to the realization that you're going to need a real-time protection. And whether that real-time protection is there such that whatever is your infrastructure as a service provider, and a service provider in this context could be someone the scale of BT or Vodafone in, in UK or AT&T or Verizon in America, uh, or they could be a digital enterprise. So an always on type enterprise, whether that's an, a retailer like Amazon um, or an online application as a service business like uh, a Salesforce or a ServiceNow, or indeed any other global corporation that uses the medium of the internet in order to work their day-to-day -day processes. So whether I'm a pharmaceutical company, uh, whether I'm an automotive company, or whether I'm a global bank, 
you know, I will operate in multiple geographies um, and I will invariably wish to collaborate with my co-workers and with third parties, including the consumer via the medium of the internet. As soon as you expose yourself to the internet, you're at risk from the cyber threats. Uh, DDoS is the one that you would actually target someone with or someone's website with if you actually just wanted to take them down. As a business, uh, I've already said, we're completely focused on this nasty DDoS problem. Uh, our product is a product known as SmartWall. So everything that is on our price list um, is prefixed with SmartWall. Uh, Carrero, to all intents and purposes, is the SmartWall uh, company. Uh, most uh, internet plumbing, let me describe it as that, today is either 10 gigabit per second links or increasingly 100 gigabit per second links. Again, I'll come to it later. Uh, over the course of the last year or so, uh, we launched a 100 gigabit per second product. Uh, we're really first to market with that. We're now seeing good uptake of that product as that market moves um, away from 10 gig links and increasingly uh, embracing 100 gigabit per second links. Uh, this is a hot market, not just for the reasons that the World Cup is on today and the attacks that make the newspapers. Cybersecurity in general is a very hot topic. Uh, specifically, DDoS within that uh, is forecast to grow when we get to 2022 to about $2 billion. This year it will probably pass through the billion dollar mark. So a compound annual growth rate uh, of probably over 20%. Uh, we've just completed in the last uh, couple of months a fundraise. We raised £7 million, of which uh, you can see on there four was an equity raise and three was a bank loan. Um, the opportunity we see right now is one of growth. Uh, we enjoyed good growth in 2017 uh, based upon uh, some of the RNSs that we've put out during the first five months of trading this year. You'll also see that uh, our growth continues um, we expect our growth to continue to outpace the market uh, this year and beyond. Uh, we've invested quite heavily both in the development of smart wall and over the course of the last 18 months in the development of our so-called go-to-market. If you see the GTM acronym in our slides, stands for go-to-market, our go-to-market partnerships. Again, more on that later. Um, in terms of our value proposition, uh, quite simply, we are the best at eliminating the impact of these DDoS attacks. We leave it to the government agencies and law enforcement to actually stop the attacks coming in the first place, uh, but we stop the impact of them. We will sit, our equipment will sit on the edge, whatever that means, between the internet and the corporate infrastructure of a company uh, or of a service provider, and we will block these attacks faster and better than anybody else. Uh, there are other people out in this market Again, I've got a slide on this later. Um, none of them uh, have this capability in terms of being able to detect and automatically mitigate the attacks in less than a second. This feels like a long time ago to me in that 2017 is the last set of uh, financials that were presented. Um, in, uh, we report every six months, we're listed on AIM. Uh, in 2017, we saw, saw overall a smart wall growth of 43%. On the chart that you see here, the uh, blue lines are the smart wall uh, growth within our business. So um, I probably should explain that overall our revenues have been flat for quite a long time, and that's because of the wind down of some legacy business that has now effectively been eliminated from our revenues. Three years ago, we declared end of life and end of sale of these products, and we took uh, some three-year support contracts, which have just taken a while to, obviously, the three years to unwind. Uh, this year, uh, 2018, will be essentially Carrero's financials will be the smart wall financials and nothing else. So smart wall will be uh, completely revealed within uh, the overall Carrero numbers. Uh, Progress over the year, uh, we're just shy of uh, 100 customers as we exited 2017. Obviously this year we would expect to be uh, well beyond 100 customers. Significantly last year we expanded the product portfolio. Um, we also announced a number of go-to-market partnerships, most notably perhaps with Juniper. Again, I'll explain where that fits in a slide or two. 
Uh, we also had some pretty, pretty significant success with improving the quality of our revenues with the adoption of what we call DDoS protection as a service or a subscription model for our product. Um, typically a subscription for us will be uh, purchased by probably a mid-tier service provider and over a 36 month term. So both providing an annuity of uh, revenue, but also in terms of typically how com technology companies are being valued today, better quality of earnings because of a higher annual recurring revenue uh, within our um, revenue mix. Again, Smartwall customers on the right, uh, some of the more recent uh, announcements, including ones uh, through the first six months of this year uh, being listed on the left. Um, one of the things that you will quite commonly find with security companies is your customers don't want you to publicly disclose who they are. It's very much viewed as a red rag to the, the criminal bulls that says, please come and attack me and I'll tell you what we use to defend ourselves. Um, many of the service providers, and by and large the people listed on the bottom here are service providers, are quite happy to disclose who they use. They actually do want to say this in the same way that you know, your favorite computer manufacturer will probably still have a sticker on your computer saying Intel inside. They actually do want to promote that it's Carrero that's providing the real-time DDoS protection because these people themselves are selling this on as a premium service to their own end customer. So the enterprise customers that sit beyond someone like GTT will consume DDoS protection as a service from GTT and the end customer uh, will probably want some comfort that the protection is being delivered by world-leading technology, in this case, uh, from Carrero. There are some notable deals that are, go unlisted uh, in terms of, or undisclosed in terms of who the name is. I'll point to one in July last year, um, US federal government agency, a, a 400K win for us, an initial deployment within uh, a four-letter acronym uh, government agency in the US uh, suffice it to say, it uh, is protecting a, um, a truly out of this world project, uh, and I'll say no more than that. Um, the, um, the strategy for this year is very much how do we uh, continue to build on our own direct marketing and sales efforts, but also how do we leverage the power of the go-to-market partnerships that we have forged, such that uh, the revenue growth uh, of Carrero outstrips the growth in numbers of people in Carrero. By far the largest uh, cost within Carrero is people. That's not uncommon within the technology business. Um, this year really sees the decoupling of our revenue, our bookings and consequently revenue growth from the number of people uh, growing. We continue to uh, focus on probably one thing more than any other. Uh, with our customers, and that is making sure we have delighted customers. Um, and that may sound sickly American. Uh, it's not, it's just good business. You know, delighted customers renew their subscriptions, they buy more, and probably most importantly of all, they tell their friends. One of the most effective marketing tools we have is referrals from existing customers. Particularly the technologists within the service providers they all talk to each other. They all talk to each other when they have a problem um, and they all talk to each other about successful solutions. And just like reviews on TripAdvisor, they also talk to each other even more about unsuccessful solutions. So people that are unable to provide the level of protection that we can, um, very often people get fed up with it and say, okay, what does actually work? And they go and talk to their friends. So that's proven to be very successful for us. Last year, we in we enjoyed something like a 300% growth in add-on business uh, from our existing customer base. Uh, we're, we're already enjoying add-on wins this year. That trend is forecast to continue, but most importantly for our uh, future growth potential, uh, the referrals from existing customers, and now that we've got 100 of those, you know, that becomes really important for us. Uh, we have been heavily investing We've been heavily investing in the development of SmartWall, and the origins of SmartWall go back uh, more than a decade, uh, but SmartWall as a, as a product has existed for around the last four years. So we invested very heavily in both the development of that and more recently in the market development of that. Just as the criminals are evolving their attack techniques, we need to continue to improve what's known as the efficacy of our product 
just how good is it, is it at detecting and mitigating these attacks. Um, you'll all, I'm sure, uh, have computers and uh, you'll all, I'm sure, have antivirus software. Um, if I was to come along and say, uh, I have this really cheap antivirus software that's five years old and I haven't updated it in five years, you could all imagine how useless that's going to be. The same applies to DDoS. Uh, whilst many of the same ingredients are used by the, the cyber criminals, uh, they're used in different combinations uh, from different sources. And unless you're bang up to date with your defenses, uh, having five-year-old antidotes to today's problems uh, is all but useless. So we continue to invest in the product, albeit not quite at the rate uh, that we've had to do in previous years. This is a complicated picture that I'll be happy to explain to you upstairs. Uh, suffice it to say, it is uh, affectionately known as the triangle picture uh, because it has a triangle. Um, most of our sales growth over the course of the last two years has come from what is on there as segment three. So people with between 30 gigabit per second and 300 gigabit per second worth of transit capacity that needs to be protected. Uh, we predominantly have sold into those service providers and digital enterprises through our direct sales efforts. As a result of our investments in go-to-market channels, we're now seeing much bigger success in segment two, so people with slightly larger uh, requirements. And the unit of value for us is typically measured in a box, and our boxes either come in 10 gigabit uh, sizes or 100 gigabit sizes. So the more mitigation capacity somebody needs, the more boxes they need, the more boxes, the more revenue for us. So go-to-market partners uh, become particularly important for us in this segment two and back on up into segment one. Broadly, uh, the focus markets for us are in Europe and in North America selling into these mid-tier, so segment three and some segment two service providers and digital enterprises. So the top row is what we tend to sell uh, through our direct efforts. The technology partnerships that we've forged and the go-to-market partnerships that we've forged uh, are our indirect channel, uh, which is where uh, we expect considerable growth this year and in uh, future years. Uh, I've talked a little bit about Juniper already. So GTT, GTT is something like the fifth or sixth largest service provider in the world. We partner with GTT. Uh, GTT, if you're a business, you can buy from GTT your internet, your internet connections. Um, GTT adds as a line item on their DDoS protection as a service if you want to have effectively a cleaner internet. So it becomes a monthly add-on for their subscribers and our business model with GTT is that we have invested in putting our equipment into their data centers and then we split the revenues uh, based upon what they manage to charge their end customers for in terms of a monthly subscription. Smartwall, uh, when first launched four years ago, as I've touched on already, the product now known as NTD120. Um, it is a box that on the front panel is about that size. It happens to be one quarter of typically a, the width of the rack uh, space in a computer data center. Uh, it uh, detects and mitigates uh, 10 gigabit per second links. Last year we launched the NTD 1100 for the 100 gigabit per second links. Both of those still come in green boxes that say Carrero on the outside, uh, quite often referred to as appliances. That means that we have a cost of goods associated with every one of those that we sell. What we've also done as a result of the investments we've made in Smartwall though is to launch the thing that's represented here, which is the virtual machine form of our product, the software only version of our product. That's available only through subscription. And that subscription is uh, therefore decoupled from the confines of a green appliance box. And we have an infinite supply of those with zero cost of goods associated with them. Right, Andrew, the uh, middle NTD... 1100? Yeah. Um, would those sit in physical servers? And the cloud data, oh, sorry, the virtual ones, would that, sit in, would that be for your cloud... Uh, would that be for your cloud data center providers? So th these could be deployed in the cloud. Um, and really, the, the, uh, but they can also be deployed within either your hardware or someone else's hardware. So potentially there's 
opens up for us what's known as an OEM opportunity, so with other equipment providers, or this software, you know, you can go and buy a Dell computer that looks a little bit like that, it just won't be a green appliance, right, okay. and have that software running on that. Okay, so you can do it on desktop machines as well? Yeah, in reality, network speed, and one of the boasts we make is full line rate on these connections. You need a relatively high-end bit of kit, but yes, it is standard kit. The thing I probably should have emphasized is that unlike our original smart wall, the, the newest generation of smart wall runs on Intel processors as opposed to a specialist microprocessor, which is what you used to have to do you know, four years ago in order to be able to operate at so-called line rate. Right. Okay. There's a lot of DDoS about. Uh, every six months we publish a trends report. Um, and that trends report shows that on average, uh, this was the one uh, that we published uh, towards the end of last year, on average, our customers are getting eight attacks every day. So as I said, at the beginning, Carphone Warehouse got attacked in the middle of 2015. Um, 18 months later, it cost them a big fine. Yesterday, they disclosed they had been offline again and had suffered another data theft. That is so far at the tip of a very deep iceberg our average is eight attacks a day. Most of the attacks are tiny in relative terms. In March this year, the, the world record was beaten for the biggest ever DDoS attack. It happened to be 1.7 terabits per second. Most of the attacks are orders of magnitude smaller. 96% are less than five gigabits per second, so 200 times smaller. More significantly, 71% of them last less than 10 minutes. And I've probably already disclosed to you this morning why. You know, if traditional defenses don't start working for 10 minutes, this is like having a burglar alarm on a jewelry store that doesn't ring for 10 minutes when the burglars show up. The criminals all know this. There's no point in buying, and most of these attacks are rented, there's no point in buying an attack that lasts more than 10 minutes because the burglar alarm will go off. If you can achieve your cr criminal ambition within 10 minutes, then you, you, there's no point in buying an attack for longer. We will detect and mitigate attacks in less than a second, allowing our customers to stay open for business during a cyber attack. The traditional methods of solving a DDoS problem, an attack, don't start working for 10 minutes. It is no surprise, therefore, that seven out of 10 attacks last less than 10 minutes. The impact of a successful attack could be lost revenue if you're on a, a site with a cash register, so most obviously a retail site. If your customers can't get through the checkout or they can't even get in the front door to start shopping, then you're going to lose revenues. Unhappy customers who can't get on your site are probably going to start shopping somewhere else or go somewhere else or tell their friends. Um, as a result, you'll suffer brand damage if it ends up in the press like Carphone Warehouse did, then you're going to be particularly upset by that. Um, and you're going to be doubly upset, uh, or your board of directors is going to be doubly upset, uh, if you suffer a regulatory fine. The, regu the, the challenge with the regulatory fines has just been ramped up, not just because of GDPR, but also a lesser known um, new regulation that came into effect on the 10th of May across all 28 member states, known as NIS, NIS. Um, NIS affects operators of essential services, so that's Transportation by air, rail, road haulage, maritime, healthcare. Remember WannaCry, the NHS? Um, uh, it affects uh, utilities, so the supply of electric gas, drinking water, and it affects upstream oil and gas. The same eye-watering 17 million pound fines if businesses fail to take the necessary measures um, to be able to detect and mitigate these cyber attacks and that they're critical national infrastructure and hence their essential service stays online during these attacks. As I've already made uh, the claim several times, um, Carrero as a business detects and mitigate these attacks faster than anybody else. Other solutions are available, they're just slower. The ones on the left hand side uh, include the number one in this market, a company known as Arbor Networks that's part of NetScout. Uh, they operate the old model that takes 10 minutes before anything happens. There are a number of providers who also offer this as a, as a very expensive cloud service. 
um, that is either available on demand or in some cases available in always on form. <coughs> our boast still stands. Um, in terms of uh, our boast still standing, um, there's very little independent testing available for this one. Um, the one genuine test that uh, was done a couple of years ago was done in the US by a respected organization known as NSS Labs. Um, they tested principally for how effective was this. Uh, for those at the back, Carrero is in the, the top right hand corner. Um, this is as close to a uh, Gartner magic quadrant as exists in this market. I suspect Gartner will get there eventually once this drifts above a billion dollar a year market. Uh, suffice it to say, uh, we're very price uh, effective in terms of what we do, but the automatic real-time mitigation and just how good we are, the accuracy or the efficacy, uh, are really our critical competitive advantages. Uh, we're expecting further growth. Uh, we are fueled up courtesy of our recent funding round. Uh, we're enjoying a good repeat business, um, good pipeline in terms of new business. Uh, we are a disruptor in this marketplace because of our claim to fame of we mitigate in seconds rather than tens of minutes. Uh, we're particularly bullish in terms of this year because in particular of uh, enjoying the harvest, if you like, from the investments that we've made in developing our channel. So I'm aware that I'm uh, hurtling towards the end of my uh, time here. Uh, so with that, I'm probably going to pause here and uh, invite questions. Um, I, I just want to understand why the market leader with a 10-minute proposition still has 35% market share and you've only got 2% yep, with a one-second proposition. Yeah, great question. What, so, yeah, do, does one, you know, do people need one second response? Not everybody is the answer. Um, so a couple of comments on that. Um, firstly, this is a very sticky proposition. And what I mean by that is once you've plumbed this in, um, the techies are going to resist you changing the plumbing for fear of breaking something. The other thing I'll explain about the traditional slow detection and mitigation is that typically it is two products with a man in the middle. And apologies to the lady in the room, this tends to be gentlemen of my sort of age, typically with beards, who sit with jeans and t-shirts in front of big screens. The detection happens by looking what's typically for what they call a volumetric increase, so a ramp up in traffic. Now the ramp up in traffic could be caused by an attack or may be completely legitimate. You know, EastEnders has just come out on the iPlayer. Microsoft's just released a new update. Your marketing department's just put out a promotion. All of those are legitimate reasons why volume would increase. When volume increases, it will be detected as an anomaly and the anomaly will be flagged up on a screen in front of the man with the gray beard. The man with the gray beard will use his wisdom and say, oh yes, that may well be an attack. That process, together with what they call then redirection of traffic to a so-called scrubbing center, that process typically takes 10 minutes for the human to be alerted, react, and redirect. Then and only then does the second technology kick in, which is known as a scrubbing center. And when you kick in a scrubbing center, uh, unless you've got some of the patented technology that we've got, um, your scrubbing center is like my old car in January on a frosty morning. It starts from cold, splutters into life, and tries to separate out the attack traffic from the good traffic. The idea being that the attack traffic is cast into what's known as the bit bucket, um, and that the good traffic is returned to where it was supposed to go to. So the, a starting from cold scrubbing center will take minutes to become effective at separating the good traffic from the attack traffic. Overall, world class is still viewed as being 10 minutes in that type of process. Typically 20 to 30 minutes is not unusual. In fact, when the record was broken at the end of February for uh, the largest ever DDoS attack, people put out a press release saying, we detected and started to mitigate this in nine minutes. Yeah. And they expected applause and we kind of shrugged our shoulders saying, so what? Because we take out the, the man in the middle and we do the detection and mitigation, ideally from the very first packet of an attack that shows up. So if, that, if we manage to trap it from the first packet, that's tens of microseconds. The most complicated types of attack may take up to three seconds. So th those world record breaking attacks 
uh, used an exploit, a, a vulnerability that's out there known um, in a technology component known as memcached D. Um, on the first day, those took us three seconds to mitigate. Subsequently got a little bit quicker than that, but um, you know, three seconds is a bump in the road in terms of uh, most internet usages. Uh, 10 minutes is nine minutes and 59 seconds too long. So how long will it take you to disrupt this market? <laughs> um, if the market is growing at 20%, um, we need to really be thinking about how do we double every year, probably for the next three years. And that's where the go-to-market partnerships are really critical to us. We cannot afford to, neither could I recruit fast enough, enough salespeople in enough countries to be able to go and reach the market fast enough uh, for our technological advantage to be uh, still as good, say, five years from now as it is today. So the critical thing for us is how over the course of the next year to three years do we rapidly expand our market share and our uh, core strategy around that is with our go-to-market partnerships. Okay, thank you very much, Andrew. <laughs>